Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are working on a project again out here in the shop, and uh, I showed you guys this bandsaw that my friend Miles McDonald has been helping me with. He's been doing more or less a cosmetic restoration on it, getting it where we can use it in the shop. And he's been doing most of this work while I've been busy working at my regular job, so I haven't really been out here working with him, but he's done a great job so far. There are a few little things, though, that I'm kind of helping him out on as we go, and today Today we're going to be making a project related to this uh, kind of in that capacity and what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be making a base for this uh, saw to sit on. Now why am I building a base? The biggest reason I'm building a base for this machine is this machine was built in the early 1900s. It was originally flat belt driven so it was driven from an overhead line shaft back before the days of electric motors. We're putting a motor on it and uh, I need a motor mount. I need a, a, a place to attach a motor to this bandsaw and there's multiple ways I can go about doing it. I've actually restored a crescent bandsaw similar to this sometime in the past. I don't have it. I sold that machine long ago but I really liked what I did then and that I built a base for it and actually put the motor mount on the base so that it was not really physically attached to the bandsaw itself. So I'm not having to drill holes and do things like that to the bandsaw. Uh, it is somewhat reversible if we ever want to take this back and keep it historically accurate. Doubt that'll ever happen, but uh, just like having those options. So uh, basically what we're gonna be doing is taking some angle iron and building a tray that this whole saw will just fit down into. It'll be captured in there. And then on the back of that, that frame, we'll build an extension coming off and that will be where we actually mount the motor that will drive the bandsaw. So uh, with that, just a little quick introduction to the project. Let's go over here and start cutting some metal and we're gonna be doing a little bit of fabricating today. So today I got out here in the shop, my nephew, this is Ren Harden. Say hi, Ren. Hi. And Ren is gonna be helping me out on this project today. Uh, have you ever done any welding or fabricating? No, I have not. Well, you know, I hadn't either before I tried it the first time, so. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> so there's always a first. So what we're going to be doing, I'm going to be letting Ren kind of do some of this work here. Uh, we're going to teach him how to do some welding today and teach him how to do some metal cutting. So uh, we're going to let him pitch in here. So guys, what I've got is I've got some angle iron. This is, I think, I think it's two inch angle iron, maybe inch and a half. I can't remember. Um, quarter inch thick, it's pretty heavy stuff. And I'm, I'm gonna be cutting it into a, enough pieces to make a rectangle. The base of that saw is 44 inches long and about 20 inches wide. So we're gonna be making it just a little bit larger than that where that base will just sit right down in uh, on this bottom shelf of this angle iron. Then the outside edge will kind of capture it and keep it from moving around. Uh, I'm gonna be cutting 45s on the end and to do that I'm using my Morse Metal Devil uh, 14 inch metal cutting saw here, which works really good. I've got it set on 45 degree angle right now. So Ren, come around here. We're gonna teach you how to saw with this thing. All right. Come around this side. We're gonna make our first cut here with this uh, saw. And again, we've got it set at 45 degrees. Uh, this saw works really well. You just basically pull it down. It cuts very fast. You don't have to put a lot of downward pressure on it and it'll just cut right through there. So Ren, give it a try. This is his first cut. There you go. You probably need to go a little bit faster, a little bit harder than what you were doing there. All right. But uh, you can see it cuts just fine. We got the saw set up now for the second 45. And on this one, I had to flip the material over because uh, the saw will only cut a 45 degree in one direction. And we need this one to be opposite of the last one. So we just flip it over. Everything's good. So we're in. All right. Try her out.
come in here and I've done some weld prep in these uh, corners, just ground it so we have some bevels and now I've come in and set this up square with my fireball tool squares that I have. I just got it one in each corner on one side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tack the ends of these in place and uh, then we're going to let Ren weld them up. I'm going to tack them first for him and uh, then we'll let him come in here and fill them in. So let's, uh, let's do it real quick. So I'm going to give Ren the controls here and let him do some welding. He's been doing some practice beads and he's been doing a pretty good job. So uh, we're going to let him try to fill in these uh, cracks here. So what I want you to do is start up here and work all the way back there into that back corner. Not bad. So I want you to, uh, i tell you what, it might be easier for you to come around this way and start in the corner and work your way back because you need to kind of get a little bit more back there in that corner. You did a good job on the front part, but when you got in that corner, it kind of got in trouble. So that's fine. You can do it right here. Just, just come over here and just come out right there, okay? good all right that's good so now let's uh we'll do the same thing in this corner so just come right in here start in that back corner and work your way out So what you guys think, not too bad for uh, only a couple of minutes of practice and instruction. I think he <laughs> nailed it there. So uh, let's continue on, let him weld the rest of these up. So what you think about welding? It was fun. You did a good job. I'm impressed. Thank You're you. welding like a pro. So what do you be, What do you want to be when you grow up? Probably not a welder. Yeah, I don't hmm. know. Well, I don't know. You'd be good at it. You actually... Uh, you actually weld better after 10 minutes of instruction and, and 10 minutes of practice. And some guys I know that have been doing it for a really long time. Well, I can't tell if that's a compliment or... Yeah. It's a compliment. <laughs> well, good job. We've got this base uh, welded up. And I think what we're going to do is uh, go over here and pick the bandsaw up, set it down in here, just make sure everything fits like it should. And uh, then we can continue on with this project. All right, we got the saw suspended under the crane. Slide that under that under there, and I'll start letting it down. Come on. Perfect. All right, that fits just really, really nice. Um, what I usually do on these is I'll come in and I'll drill a hole and weld a nut in there and put like a half inch bolt in several places and that way I can kind of tighten it up on there so it doesn't move around in that frame. And that also actually helps me get everything aligned with my belts if I need to tweak it a little bit side to side. There's enough room in that tray that things will move around a little bit. So uh, all looks good there. I think you can get it. So I've measured on here some holes that we want to drill through. Again, this will be for some set screws that will go through it to tighten against the base of the bandsaw. And that will just keep everything lined up and locked in place. 
and take up any gap that we have around it because I did make it a little bit oversized. Uh, just make sure we have plenty of room. We've got our holes drilled and again what we're going to be doing is putting a set screw in this to tighten up against the machine. So I've just got a, a bolt. I got a square head nut that I'm going to actually weld to the outside of this. That's what will be threaded and I'm just going to tighten that in place and we'll weld it in place. And then this way, by doing it this way, I know that when I weld it, my, my screw's going straight through that hole and we're good. And we're not going to go crazy welding these in place. They just need to be tacked. So uh, Ren's suiting up and I'm going to let him do that. So just zip it on just these two sides down there, right there in that corner. Don't get onto the bolt at all. You can do a little bit more than that. Yeah, about two or three seconds and that's it. Uh, just the other side over here. We don't want to do all four sides. Well, we're making progress on this. I uh, didn't really show this part, but we just welded this little three piece uh, addition onto the back. And this is where the motor is going to mount onto the frame. And uh, I've still got to put some cross rails on here that has some slots so the motor can mount on. But I'm actually going to buy a motor mount that's adjustable in and out. Uh, I'm going to order that from McMaster Car. It should be here next week. But before I put those rails and everything on here, uh, I want to get that in place so I can make sure I get them exactly in the right place. In fact, I'll probably bolt the motor mount to my rails and then weld them in place. That way I'm guaranteed everything will um, line up exactly right. And I've got a drawing that I downloaded from McMaster Car, but I just would rather trust the uh, actual part rather than a, a, a diagram and then get here and be different, uh, just protecting myself. But this is pretty well done. I think the only thing I've got that I want to do next, and uh, we'll show this, is uh, I'm going to put some cross rails up underneath the bottom. And um, the idea here, if you looked over on that bandsaw base, there's four holes that go down through it. And uh, I want to get those lined up where I can drill a hole all the way down through uh, those four bolt holes. And I'm going to get four leveling feet. Also, I'll order those from a master car that will have a bolt that comes up through a piece in the bottom. I'll probably weld a nut in there once I get those leveling feet positioned properly uh, so that I can ad adjust up and down. And then those bolts will go all the way through and then I can actually put a, a bolt on the other side or a nut on the other side and sandwich everything down. That will just make sure that the base is uh, attached on here. So let me uh, get those pieces of metal cut and figure out exactly where they need to go. We'll weld those on and that's probably going to be it. Is it hot? Yeah, it's a little hot. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you pulling your hand back there. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. So this is just a piece two inches wide. That's about three eighths inch thick piece of steel. And again, that's what's going to support those holes. We'll have some holes that are drilled through here that the, uh, uh, it's about, about three inches in on each side is about where the hole will be. So it'll be about right here. And that's what that leveling foot's going to come up through. So um, we'll go ahead. I got them positioned on here. So we'll let Ren weld those in place. And with that, I think we are done, at least for today. Like I said, I've still got to get the brackets on here for the motor mount. I've still got to drill the holes in there, but I want to wait until I get my leveling feet and my motor mount in-house before I do that. So we'll finish that, those parts up later on. But the bulk of this uh, base for that bandsaw is complete. And I want to thank my apprentice for today, Ren, for coming out here and helping me. Thank you. What do you think about all this welding? It's fine. Good. Good. Well, if you ever want to come back, 
always need help around here, so we'll, we'll put you to work. All right. Good deal. All right, guys, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and uh, thumbs up appreciated, as are those comments, and we'll catch you on the next video.